Hi everybody, I just wanted to do a really quick introduction to apologise for the video quality in this vlog. Um, I'm really sorry but yesterday when I filmed it I had to use my iPhone and I didn't realise just how poor the light quality coming through the window was so consequently the quality of this video is just not that great. I did consider refilming but as I explain in this video my dad is currently very unwell and I'm running backwards and forwards um, when I'm not at work to make sure he's okay and that kind of thing and I really haven't got time this week to refilm this video for you so I wanted to get it out there because obviously it's my October makes video um, it does improve as the video goes along. The first make is a bit difficult and a bit awkward for you to see but I just wanted to say I'm really really sorry and I hope that you understand. I um, hope you enjoy this video anyway and um, yeah that's it really. So um, yeah really really sorry. Please bear with me. I'll try to uh, make sure that the next one is better and I will see you again really soon. Bye -bye. Hi everybody welcome back to my channel. So today is my makes for October video and I'm filming this on my phone so I'm really sorry if the sound quality is not as good as normal. Um, my daughter's here for the weekend so my sewing room is a real, it's it's quite a small room anyway because it, obviously you can see the bed just there. So it is um, used as the spare room and there's not a lot of room in here especially with all my sewing stuff as well. So obviously she's here for the weekend and has got her, all her things in here as well so it's really cramped. So. I'm struggling to um, film with my tripod and camera in here today so I'm filming in a slightly different position but I hope I hope this vlog will turn out okay. So firstly thank you to all my new subscribers and to everyone who commented on my last vlog which was about my fabric haul. I have just applied, applied? replied oh my gosh my brain is not working today to most of you so um thank you for everybody that commented i have read everybody's comments and you've given me some fantastic ideas so i'm really really grateful for that and um, there's a few things that i had not even thought of and um yeah i'm really looking forward to sharing my plans for november with you which is going to be in a different video so I hope you've had a really good week. Um, I hope you like my hair today. I was watching Lisa Comfort's video the other day where she showed you how to style your hair with a pair of um, flat irons. And yeah, basically I've tried doing that before and my hair is naturally quite wavy, um, but it doesn't do what I want it to do. Um, and so I tend to straighten it which I know is really bad for your hair and I know the ends of my hair are quite dry at the minute but I'm due to have it cut this week and I know I'm waffling at the minute but I feel I need to tell you this but anyway I watched her vlog and my hairdresser has previously tried to show me how to curl my hair with with um, straightening irons and I've never been able to do it and after watching Lisa's video the other day I actually thought gosh she really shows it really clearly so I've had a go and I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out so uh, so yeah so got my hair a little bit different today anyway let's crack on with um, my makes for October so I think that I've managed to get through everything I haven't checked my vlog because I know that I had quite a few plans for October and I haven't checked my my vlog from then to actually look at what um, I said I was going to do. I know that um, I had a couple of man sewing things that I had planned which I have got those done and I think I've got everything more or less done. There's some hits and some misses, um, some things that don't quite fit too well but I'll share them all with you anyway. So I'll start off with the, the um, clothes that I was going to make for my husband and my son as part of the Sew Man Pants Challenge. I was going to make was the Jeff trousers which is these ones here I'll show you a close-up picture there um, and this is from the La Maison Victor magazine which is the men's special um, this was issue six so it was out about a month or so ago so I'm really pleased to say I got these done and um, here they are. Now I'm going to, I don't know how well these are going to show up on screen. I haven't got a picture of my son wearing them at the minute. I'm just going to step back a bit so you can see. But basically they have a 
an elasticated waistband. Now they are supposed to have um, a couple of eyelets in here that you attach like a drawstring through, but this ribbing is actually not, it's not great quality. And I didn't, I was a bit concerned that it wouldn't work very effectively. So basically all I did was just a normal ribbed waistband with elastic in there. So they've got pockets at the side that are all top stitched. Are they top stitched? No, they're not. Oh my gosh, I can't see very well at all. Yes, they are top stitched. They've got some, I don't know if you can see that very well. The quality on this camera is not brilliant. Um, but yeah, they are top stitched. And then they've got panels in the legs. If I just come back a little bit, you might be able to see it better. So there's paneling here. Um, and then at the back, you're gonna have to excuse these, I'm afraid, because my son has had these on for the best part of two weeks now and they've not been washed. And if any of you that have got teenage boys will know what I mean about the fact that um, they seem to be allergic to water and changing the clothes. So these are a little bit dirty and I've managed to get these off his bedroom floor this morning to be able to show you them. But unfortunately, I haven't got any pictures of him wearing them. Um, the back, they have pockets as you can see, that are all nicely top stitched. The pockets are in two parts and they come together really well. And I'm not sure if they've got a, yeah, they've got, if you have a look here, they've got like a, they've got like a, a seam that runs down there. So they look quite complicated and to be, gosh, lighting on this camera is awful. Um, but to be honest, they, they do come together really well. There's lots of, oh, there's a yoke at the back as well. If I show you that. So you've got a yoke at the back as well. Now, um, the instructions, I would say if you're a beginner, I wouldn't attempt something like this because the instructions in this magazine are not fantastic for beginners. And they remind me a little bit of Birda, and although I think they're a little bit better than Birda, but um, you do need to sort of know what you're doing. Now, the good thing about these is there's lots, obviously there's lots of pattern pieces to these, these trousers. Now, I'll just show you the bottom. I've simply just hemmed them at the bottom and turned them up. Um, they are supposed to be, um, well, they're not cuffed, but they're supposed to be a bit longer that you can roll up, but my son doesn't really like that look. So I basically just hemmed them at the bottom with quite a deep hem. So hopefully they'll last him a little while longer than normal. Now, as I was saying, the instructions are, um, are okay. Um, but if you've if you've not made this style of trousers before, I wouldn't choose these as your first attempt because I would suggest you find a pattern such as the Thread Theory Jedediah pants that have much better instructions. Um, the one thing I will say about these is that the um, each pattern piece has got little numbers or letters that show you where to attach to the next pattern piece, if that makes sense, they match up. So rather than just notches, um, that's really helpful because of the number of pattern pieces. I didn't find that they took me too long, to be honest. So probably about, bearing in mind the cutting out as well, um, I would say about four hours to get these done. But I'm really, really pleased with them and my son really likes them. So that's always a bonus. The only thing as well with this magazine, which I did find out when I'd, I'll show you the other one in a minute because I made my husband a t-shirt, is that they don't have seam allowances included. So I added on, it suggests that you add on a centimetre seam allowance, but I actually added on five eighths of an inch um, just so I had a little bit more room to play with because I weren't sure of the fit. Obviously, this is the first thing that I'd made from this magazine. So I weren't sure of the drafting or the fit, but the drafting is impeccable to be honest and the fit is perfect for my son so really really happy with those trousers and yeah is as i say he's not had them off for the last two weeks so now i've got them they're going in the wash okay so the next thing that i made out of this magazine was the isaac t-shirt which is this one here if i just show you a picture okay so it's this t-shirt here this one Okay, now I, it's a colour, well, it's a colour blocked t-shirt or you can use, as they've done, two different prints um, with a pocket on. Now, I made my husband this out of just some plain black and grey marl 
jersey. This has been in the wash, but it's not been ironed. It's been in my tumble dryer as well, so there's little bits of fluff on it, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but I didn't put the pocket on because I didn't think that was quite my husband's bag. Um, but here it is. So if I just stand back and show you. So this is the T-shirt. Really pleased how this has come out. Now, when I traced off the pattern, I didn't see that you needed to add the seam allowance. So I made my husband the biggest size and it only just fits him. Um, I'll put some pictures up here of him wearing it because I did take some pictures of him wearing this. Um, and yeah, then I realised that actually I didn't add the seam allowance. So fortunately it fits, but um, it's just got a simple neckband which is top stitched, if you can see that there. Um, and the sleeves are just simply overlocked I've overlocked them on the inside and then top stitched top stitch those down there so and there is enough stretch in it to be honest um I don't have a cover stitch those of you that watch my channel a lot will know that I really want a cover stitch and um yeah I haven't got one but yeah really happy with that I really like how I've managed to get the matching of the colour blocking because that's one thing you need to really really watch I mean obviously the underarm seam there is not perfect but I was more bothered about getting the black lining up because I think that would have shown up more than the um sleeve not being lined up totally there but hey ho um and then the other side is a bit better I think yeah that one's more or less pretty well it's not perfect but it's it's okay it's okay and yeah he really likes it he wears it he wears it a lot. I really like this grey mal jersey. It's really good quality and I can't remember where I got it from now. Um, it feels like a quite a thick sort of um, cotton jersey, but it's it's got lots of good recovery in it. So yeah, really, really happy with that. So that's that one. Um, now next up, I made the Nico top from True Bias. Again, I'll put a little picture of the pattern here. It's very much a simple turtleneck jumper um, or dress that you can either have sleeves in or you can have it sleeveless. And I just wanted a really basic black um, turtleneck that I could wear with trousers with jeans that kind of thing through the autumn and the winter so I'd got some black jersey in my stash which I got from Colville showed you that in my um, October plans video and I've made the jumper here so I'm just gonna go get changed into this and I'll put it on and then show you what it looks like. okay so here we are this is the Nico top that I made in the long sleeve version and as you can see I've got the turtleneck just there and I really love this style because I've got quite a long neck, so I think it, I think this sort of style and roll neck suit me quite well. Um, the only adjustments I made to this was lengthening the sleeves slightly and um, I lengthened the body as well, which are the usual adjustments that I make. This rib is, it's not a cotton, I'll just bring it closer so you can have a look. It has lots of poly in it, but you know, it's quite warm for this time of year. So I'm really, really happy with this. It's a great basic. I think I made the size 10, which is the US size 10, which obviously UK is a 14. Um, it was either that or the 8. Not quite sure, to be honest. But sizing was absolutely great. Now, the only thing I wasn't sure about with this fabric particularly was how to hem it. Because I thought with it being like a rib fabric, if I hemmed it, it might look a bit weird. Or it might stretch out of shape, that kind of thing. So actually didn't hem it at all so I don't know if you can see that close up there but all I did I've just left the edges raw because with it being jersey it's not going to fray and um, I've got a rotary cutter and cutting mat and I thought I will just cut those really really straight and then it just looks nice and neat so I'm really quite happy with well it's not perfect but it's it's okay so I've done that with the cuffs and also the bottom of the um, the top <laughs> I've done that with the bottom as well so um so yeah it's absolutely fine and I think sometimes these sort of skinny rib type jumpers when you buy them in the shops they're not they're not hemmed they're just left with a raw edge anyway aren't they so I think that works absolutely fine so if you've got this kind of fabric and you're thinking of making a top out of it I would suggest I don't think you'll get a really neat finish if you use scissors you'd need a rotary cutter and a rotary mat so 
yeah but it's this fabric's great so I've got I've probably got loads of it left to be honest so I might make make another top out of it and have have two the same <laughs> I don't know we'll see but no I'm really happy with this I think it looks I can wear it casually I could wear it quite smart um and wear it layered with cardigan over the top that kind of thing which actually brings me to my next make so I was toying with ideas on that lovely Oatmealy Pointel fabric that I got from Walton's of making a cardigan for um for that and I was thinking about the Blackwood cardigan from Helen's Closet and I still really need to get that pattern I haven't bought it yet um I was also thinking about um a couple of other patterns that I've got I think there was the named Esme which I've made before which was far too big um, but I decided on that I didn't want to spend any money on patterns this month because I've already got lots and lots and I'm actually waiting for the Black Friday sale. I'm really hoping that Helen's Closet will have a discount so that I can get the Blackwood finally. Um, but I thought I'll just use what I've got in my stash for now so, and I decided to make the Oslo by Seamwork. Um, and here it is. So I'm just going to put so here it is. So I'm just going to put this on to show you what it okay, looks like. Okay, so this isn't the best view of this cardigan, but it's essentially got a bit of a shawl collar and it's got long sleeves with a really deep cuff on it, both sides there, if you can see that. And um, if you can see the shawl collar is, is stitched on and it goes all the way down, I will take some photos of me wearing it and insert them so you can have a better look. Um, now, I made a size large, which based on my body measurements should fit me absolutely fine, but this has come out really big. Um, you can see that I'd, I'm not sure if I, actually, without checking the pattern pictures, if the shoulder is supposed to drop so low, um, but the sleeves are huge on me. Um, and I have lengthened the sleeves anyway, because I've got long arms but to be honest I probably didn't need to because these cuffs are so deep if I just pull that straight out you can see there we go look there's my fingers um so I probably didn't need to lengthen those um so I mean it's fine but I just think it's a little bit it's just too too big I mean it'd be great for you know snuggling up in front of the fire but I don't think it's a total a total success if I'm honest. Um, on the pattern you can add buttons and a buttonhole, buttonholes to make it fasten but I didn't I didn't bother with mine. It comes to sort of mid thigh which you'll probably see from the pictures but um, it's okay but I'm not totally I'm not totally enthralled with it and I think if I made it again I would size, definitely size down um, to a medium. I seem to be having a bit of a problem with um, choosing pattern sizes at the minute because I'm either choosing something that's too big or I'm choosing something that is a bit too small. I think since I've put on weight I'm really struggling with with sizing and I really should just measure myself and do it that way but yeah this is this is just um it was an easy pattern to put together but I found that as I say it's just too big the large is too big for me so I think I'm going to, I will wear it because I'll wear it snuggling up in front of the fire, that kind of thing. But I don't think I'll wear it, wear it to go out and about in. So, yeah. So that's the Oslo cardigan. Anyway. Okay. Next thing. I'll just whip this off because I'm getting a bit warm. Now, next thing I made was the Seamwork Astoria. And I've made this three times before. Um, twice for myself and once for my daughter. And I'd got some lovely blue Ponte Roma from Walton's and I'd got those really lovely Albstoff cuffs that I got from Sister Mintaka, which I wanted to add on the end. And I am so, so pleased with how this has worked. I'm in love with it. It just looks gorgeous. So here it is. If I just pull back. So I will put it on, but I just want to show you, look at those cuffs. How cute are those with the gold edge, I think, they just finish this off so well. So I'm going to put this on and show you what it okay, looks like. So here it is. I'm not going to show you any lower than this because I've got it on with um, some sort of low hipster jeans on at the minute. And I really don't, you really don't want to see my uh, midriff on the World Wide Web at the minute. But anyway, the Astoria is a um, cropped jumper 
and there's the cuffs there I absolutely love these I just think they finish off this jumper so well I love that gold I think it's a really nice touch and these were so easy to it was so easy to attach if I just grab it just bear with me a second and I'll show you okay so these are these are them here and you basically get it in let me just take that pin out you get it in a big long roll like that and obviously you just I had to do a bit of guesswork to um, to just make sure that this would fit me right and um, because obviously the seam work comes with pre a pattern piece for the cuffs and obviously I didn't need to use that so I had to do a bit of guesswork to get the right size but um, and also just to make sure that the pattern matching matched up but I'm really happy with that that's that side and that side there and I sewed these together on my overlocker in fact most of the top was on my overlocker it's got just a nice neckband which is top stitched down and um, this fabric's really nice and soft it's lovely so uh, yeah I'm really really happy with the Astoria as I say I've made it three times before not sure what size I made I really can't remember to be honest I think it I can't remember but um but yeah i'm really really happy with this and i think i'm going to wear it loads um with high-waisted jeans though not low not low-waisted ones i don't have the figure of an 18 year old anymore unfortunately okay so that's the astoria this is a really quick make i know amanda from i sew a lot has done a one hour challenge i think on the astoria she's made quite a few and yeah you can put this together in an hour it's literally one, two, three pattern pieces. It's just, well, no, it's, <laughs> you've got a cuff at the bottom and a cuff on the sleeve. So it's a little bit more than that, but yeah, you can you can whip this up in an hour. Great for a beginner. Um, the only um, alteration I did to this was lengthen the bodice because I think I added about an inch and a half and it is still fairly cropped on me because I'm quite long bodied. So I also made this month the Butterick I'm just looking because I can't remember the number of the jacket. Is it the B5296? Something like that. I will put a, 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 a link of it down below so you can go have a look. And I did a separate vlog on this jacket um, where I did a sort of sew with me. And yep, yeah, this is it here. So it's an unlined jacket designed for knit fabrics. And I really, really love this. It's just fabulous. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because obviously I'll put, put it on though. Obviously um, I did a separate separate vlog on this but um, yeah love this jacket and I've already worn it a number of times out and about. Um, still got a lot of work to do with obviously the the joining of the collar and the facing because it's just not great is it let's face it but you know for the first one that I've ever done I'm happy with that. And then the final thing that I have to show you is the, another pair of Camille trousers. So I had some lovely linen that I got from Walton's, that's right. And I wanted to make another pair of Camille trousers with the adjustments that I said I would make from the pair that I made last time. Because if you remember last time with the checked pair, I added in a good three quarters of an inch, I think it was, to the crotch depth. Um, and lengthen the leg length by about four inches as well and they were just far too long and the crotch was too low um, and I also had to take them in a lot I think I made the size 14 full 14 this time what I did was I did size 12 waist and um, graded out to a 14 hip and I took off that extra length on the legs and these are them here now they still need hemming I've still got to I've got pins in these at the minute so because I need to um, hand stitch the hem but with this pair I have um, taken out that extra that I put in the crotch as well now I'm not going to put these on they do fit but there's the zip at the back so it has an invisible zipper at the back except that's not that invisible at the minute but I'm not too worried about that and I'll tell you why because these are just a little bit too tight and yes I can get them on and I don't have any of that spillage that you get over the top of trousers sometimes. Um, however, 
because of the pleats and this waistband being so fitted it makes everything underneath it look a bit larger than it is if that makes sense so I've decided what and also the leg length is just a little bit too short now don't know why that's happened I really don't know but anyway what I've decided to do and it's a real shame because the you know the inside of, of this is all lovely hand stitched down it's you know it's gone in so nicely but what I've decided to do is I'm going to take the waistband off because when I I don't know why but when when I attached the waistband I ended up the waistband was significantly smaller than the actual top of the trousers now the pleats are in the correct place because it's the size 12 but I ended up having to take a huge wedge out in the middle to get the waistband to fit if I show you that inside so that's my wedge there that I had to take out. I don't know if you can see the stitching line. It's just about there. There's a huge wedge there. If I just turn it that way, you might be able to see it better. Huge wedge. It's probably a good a good two inch, to be honest, from the from the original stitching line to get the waistband to fit. And what I've decided to do is I'm gonna take the waistband off. I'm gonna let out that wedge at the front. I'm gonna make the size 14 waistband or a waistband, yeah, the 14 waistband, because I think I need that, and then reattach it, and then I'm hoping that it will drop the leg length to what it should be, because this has had to come up so far to literally right under my ribs um, to make it fit. And yeah, they're just not comfortable. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm classing these as not finished yet, and I'm hoping to get them done in, um, in November because I've still got a fair bit of this fabric left so I've got enough to recut the waistband but I can't face that doing that today so that's it that's my makes for October so all in all I think I did pretty well I think I got most things done that I wanted to do um I've still got to do my October favorites video because if you remember in my video last week I said that I wanted it was my birthday it was my birthday on Friday and I had a really lovely day thank you for those of you that sent me those well wishes that was lovely um went fabric shopping which what else am I going to do on my birthday um and I got a few little bits from Fabworks. um I've had a really really stressful week leading up to my birthday my dad's not very well at the minute and I'm having to go in every day and make sure he's okay as well as trying to work um, with a full-time job and you know um, family house life that kind of thing and so it's been a really really difficult stressful week so and my dad being unwell is going to continue throughout November I think so I do need to do a plans video um, but I'm not sure yet what my plans are going to be for November because I don't think I will have as much sewing time as what I usually have in view of the fact that I'm trying to look after and support my dad. Um, in addition to that, obviously I wanted to do my October favourites video and I'm going to do that next, I think, because I've got a few lovely bits and pieces to show you that I got for my birthday, I got throughout in October that I thought you might be interested in seeing as well. Um, my work plans video, because I know some of you, obviously I've discussed it in my last video and said that with me starting a new job where I'm not going to be wearing a uniform I wanted to plan a work wardrobe and I'm going to be starting that new job in January so I need to really think about what I need in my wardrobe and I think it will consist of lots of tops and um, trousers that kind of thing because they're the, uh, separate so the kinds of things I like to wear in winter really so I think that um, yeah I need to think about that but I'm hoping to do that for December so I think the next video will be my October October favourites to show you and um, then I'll do my plans video after that so I hope you've enjoyed having a look at what I've made in October if you have please give me a thumbs up and um, yeah if you haven't yet subscribed please do because I'm um, generally put up videos once a week or sometimes twice a week just depends on what time I've got at the minute and um, yeah let me know what you think and I will look forward to being back to um, see you all really really soon bye bye